little bit because lately I've been talking to a lot of different musicians and for, for whatever reason I've been talking to a, like a split 50-50 some trained some not and I constantly see this sort of weird gray area that comes with the philosophy of it all there's some that really appreciate and like I said earlier they, they definitely hold the traditional schooled musician to a high pedigree and but then on the flip side there's those there's this kind of movement now where because of YouTube and because of the accessibility of knowledge there's so many people that kind of prefer and again they hold to a pedestal this sort of nomad that can kind of teach themselves anything and even if they teach themselves a quote-unquote bad technique as long as it works they kind of appreciate that it's interesting for me that that you're saying all this because your music is incredible and i get a lot of like bluesy black keys and a lot of modern takes to that in your style which is not easy to replicate and so part of me wonders if maybe, just maybe, I don't know, I could be wrong, but what if your style and your music arose because of that? You know what I mean? Like because you were a bit of a nomad in that sense where you taught yourself and you kind of found your way here, your technique may not be what is ideal, but somehow that helps you create the style that you're currently doing. Does that sort of make sense, what I'm saying? It definitely makes sense. Like I, I would, I, I believe and I actually hope that just the way that I learn to piece together music and write music and play the guitar um, or play the piano, whatever I'm doing, I, I hope that that sort of lends itself to the individuality of music, right? Um, and I, I think it does. And I think it's like, and I, I remember I was reading this story about like this guy, as it was like a studio tech who was really preparing for Elton John to come in and play the piano that was in his studio. And so this guy's freaking out, obviously, you know, granted, he's, he's trying to, to make sure the piano sounds perfect. He's setting up these microphones in all these different ways. He's testing the piano, making sure it's in tune. But for whatever reason, like he couldn't get the piano to sound the way that it did when Elton would play it on his records. And he kept trying to change things, but he just, he started freaking out. He couldn't get it ready. So then finally Elton John shows up to the studio and he, you know, takes a look at the piano. He sits down. He starts playing it. The studio tech is like, you know, is basically freaking out in the background and he starts playing and automatically it sounds exactly like Elton John because it's him playing the instrument, right? Yeah. That was, that was the factor that was missing. You're missing the player. So I just feel like, you know, whatever way Elton learned how to play the piano, whatever way Jimmy learned how to play the guitar, it's just like that is going to lend itself to, to the individuality of your sound. And I, I hope the way that I learned to pick up the, the guitar people could hear a riff that I play or a couple notes that I play and automatically think like, Oh, that's tar. Like, I know that's just the way he plays. Yeah. So, so yeah, whether the technique's right or wrong, honestly, it doesn't matter if you like the music. That's, that's it. Do you think that, and I'm glad you say that because I, I legitimately believe in what you just said. I think at the end of the day, what matters is music and it, how it connects everybody. That's always going to come first over anything, but using that Elton John example, you're absolutely right. I feel like, the legends that we all admire, for the most part, all have their own unique takes to their instruments, right, or their craft, or whatever it is that we're talking about. And there comes to a po there comes a point where critics, you know, or people that are sort of more in the ac academic world, will look at somebody who's a legend and criticize their technique and be like, "Well, he didn't learn it right, and he doesn't play it right, but he's Elton John, so you know, it's sort of a pass." You know what yeah, I mean? And, and so, yeah, exactly. And so my question is, how would you, because it sounds to me like you are very objective with the way you play. You understand that you play, you learned your own way, but you're sort of open to more experiences and see where your guitar playing goes. Do you ever fear that if you were to learn the right technique, quote unquote, whatever that is, that you might lose a little bit of what makes you unique? Or do you feel like it would enhance it more? Yeah, I think at, I think at this point, you know, maybe a little bit earlier on, it could have done that. But I think at this point, that style is sort of ingrained in the way that I play. So anything else that I learn, I think will just enhance the way that I play. So I'm kind of eager to learn new things and mm. new techniques. And then especially because of what I got to do live, like, you know, I got to play these songs. It's just a duo, right? So yeah, just I you and a drummer, right? The, it's just it's just myself and Justin, right? It's I mean, we're the Blue Stones. So I've got to play the music on the guitar and sing at the same time. So like, there's a lot going on um, for me to hold down a melody and hold down some riffs and then play a little bit of lead, play a little bit of rhythm. So really any technique 
that makes it easier for me to do that would just lend itself to a better performance. So yeah, I'm eager to learn proper techniques because now it's it's not about you know uh, even writing music anymore. It's about like functionality and efficiency when you're up on stage because you get up there, you play in 90 minute sets, two hour sets, like, you know, you gotta, you gotta be ready. It's, it's a very physical thing. So anything that will help me do that, I'm definitely eager to learn that. And then you got to do that again the next day. And then the next day, especially when you're next day and the next day. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's so much of, of being like a musician or like a professional touring musician. You know, there's a lot about creating and writing and, and performing, but then, there's a lot about like preserving yourself too. I think a lot of people don't really think about the actual toll that it takes on you physically and mentally, yeah. especially musicians like us. Like we're very energetic and very, um, very active up on stage. And like when you're doing that night after night, man, you got to learn how to take care of yourself, you know, just to be able to do it. Like you have to learn how to take care of yourself. So really it's, it's about pacing and, and doing things the right way just to preserve your body rather than, you know, make it sound good. Yeah, how crazy. You know, it's interesting that you you say that because I was just watching this video. I can't remember who produced it. I think it might have been Vice or Vox, but it was a video I was watching online and it was about this um really famous vocal coach, but she's I guess I guess she's famous in the opera world. Anyways, uh this video was about how she sort of became the vocal coach for all of the the hardcore screamo heavy metal not heavy metal, but you know, like the, the modern day screaming bands, right? right? And it w- it had people on there like Caleb from uh, from from Bare Hands and other famous like, bands in that world that you know they have to scream in the performances quite a bit, and it shows how this lady sort of became the go to person. She saw a need in this industry of people that were screamers and how they should do it properly because they were destroying their voices because nobody taught them how to do it properly. And here's this random operatic teacher who comes in and teaches all these screamo bands how to scream properly so that they don't destroy their vocal cords. So I I bring this up because this is sort of a challenge I went through years ago. And I see this with a lot of young musicians coming up. And artists in general, not just even musicians, just anyone who does art in general. There's sort of this romanticization of suffering. The suffering and the struggle that it takes (laughs) to create art. And that can be defined in many different ways. But for musicians, I feel like now because there is this sort of movement of teaching yourself and that sort of raw talent that comes from just teaching yourself, there's this sort of appreciation and sort of push to push your body to limits that you normally wouldn't if you were trained, you know? And so you seem to be very, like you seem to make these decisions very easily. You know what I mean? Like you taught yourself, you were cool with your style, and now you're sort of in a different state. And so you're very much willing to accept that you need to learn some things to help you perform better. But I've met other people that don't do that by choice. And so I'm curious, why do you feel like you made those choices? I I mean, do you feel like in your life you're able to transition and adapt pretty easily? Like maybe that's why? Or is there another reason why you feel like you're able to accept these transitions and mindsets and all that as your career expands? I know that's a mouthful, (laughs) but I'm I'm generally curious. I guess I, I try to just stay open-minded with things that I think it would be really dumb of me if I was like stubborn and refused to learn anything new, especially if that thing could make me better as a musician overall and improve the music that I, that I make. Um, but yeah, I, I try to keep an open mind and I, I do feel like I can adapt pretty well to things. Yeah. You know, if like there's, there's a change that's gotta be made. It might seem hard at first, but you know, after a while you just, you kind of get used to it and, and you, you just roll with it pretty much. Um, yeah, I get, I, I'm trying to answer the question, but <laughs> to be honest, I'm trying to remember what the question was. It was the, que- a lot the, the question was basically that you seem to adapt pretty easily. And I was curious if that's just your personality or if you sort of learned that from something else. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I don't really, I don't really like to, to dwell on how things used to be. If they're, they're changed, like it's just whatever, let's just, roll with it um yeah i I think i adapt fairly well to new situations obviously there's some things that i have a hard time shaking off like for example like if i i really have a hard time like if i feel i played a bad show um that will stick to me stick with me for a while uh you know it's it's just hard to get out there and feel like i disappointed you know i disappointed people um 
that's one hard thing for me to shake. But otherwise, yeah, I think I'm pretty easy going. And when it comes to, if it's going to make me better, I'll do it pretty much. Interesting. Why do you think it's hard to feel that way? I mean, I feel like that's a pretty generic question because nobody likes to disappoint yeah, people, but course. especially I, in music, you know what I mean? Like, it's, I feel like that's a very relatable feeling that almost anyone who's been in a band has felt at some point, multiple times, I, I, I would argue. I feel like Justin is really good at, you know, if we if somehow we play a bad show, like even if he thinks that he didn't perform well, like he's really good at just being like, oh, well, you know what? It's done. Let's just move on to the next one, you know? Whereas for me, like I'll just sit there and be like, wow, like why? What? I just, I really don't feel good about it. And it'll last for a couple hours. Eventually I'll get over it. But I don't know. I just feel like every time I get out there, I am pretty hard on myself as far as like making sure everything sounds exactly how I think it should. And when it doesn't, I, I don't know, I just feel like I kind of let people down who paid to come see this show or who were really looking forward to seeing us live. And then I didn't give them the best show that I possibly could. So that, that probably is the reason why. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's silly because everybody makes mistakes and everybody has good shows and bad shows. So well, of course. Is it rare? It's go. Do you feel like having bad shows are less common? I, am, I would imagine well, so. But I'm curious. You know what's funny? There's a difference between what we think a bad show is and what the audience thinks about. How bad true? Shows. Very true. It's so weird. Like we could go up there and just in our minds just bomb. Like Justin will be like, "Man, I missed like four snare hits, and I, I my kick drum pedal fell out." And like I'll be there. I'll be like, "My pedal completely blew. I couldn't even play this part." But then you see people afterwards. You talk to them at the merch group or whatever, and they're like, "Oh my god, you guys blew my mind." I'm just sitting there like, really? You have no idea what we went through up there. <laughs> yeah. But it's it really is a difference. And you have to try to remind yourself, you know, like to you, you've played whatever songs you're playing, you know, a thousand times, you know, even more. And to somebody who's hearing you for the first time, like you might think you're playing it at maybe 70% of the quality that it should be. But to them, it's like, wow, this is like, this is amazing. It's the first time I've heard this live and I love it. So it's, that's one thing that I sort of helps me get over. 